Hello, welcome to the Man of the Match show for the Everton 1 Fulham 1 game at the weekend. Wasn't a great game of football, was it? Let's be honest there. Don't think Everton played particularly well, but they stuck at it and ended up coming out of it with a point. Uh, the difficulty with this one, and picking a Man of Match in this one, that not everybody stood out, uh, but there was one player who did stand out on the night for me, and that was Adrissa Garner Gay. I think... Doesn't matter his age, he seems to just roll back the years. He was everywhere all over that pitch. And comfortably, Evans, best player for me. Uh, and with the man of the match show, I explain every time I do it that it's, I give the man of the match just off my eyes and I give it to Adrissa Garner Gay. Like I said, I hadn't looked at any of his numbers, any of his stats. I do do that the next day uh, to see whether or not it's sort of in sync with what I saw. And obviously, as always with this show, we will go through the numbers and see whether or not my eyes deceived me at the weekend. But like I say, not a great performance. Uh, I, I'm a bit confused with what Everton are trying to do at times, um, other than just whack it long to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And therefore, it means that we're always giving the ball up. I, I, again, yeah, I don't understand it. I think away from home, slightly different. But at Goodison, I think we have to change the way we play. But hey-ho, we are what we are at the moment and we have to get through it. Um, so it's Richard Garner Gay, yet yeah, my man of the match. Like I said, everywhere for me, all over the pitch, putting fires out, trying to get us on the front foot a little bit whenever we got the ball. So he stood out for me alongside, obviously he was in there with Abdelai de Corey and Dwight McNeil, but Garner stood out for me. So let's have a look at his overall stats from the game. So let's have a look at Garner's general stats from the weekend. There we can see passing accuracy, 89%. Uh, tackles, four. Ground duels, he won nine out of 11 of those. Completed 100% of his dribbles, two out of two. And his interceptions were two. Uh, like I say, he had a really, really good game for me. He was everywhere, he was was the pick of our players comfortably, uh, and was at everything we did well and almost scored with an absolute world. He was hit the underside of the bar and came out. Uh, let's drill down into Garner's stats then from the weekend. Let's have a look at Garner's tacking stats. Here we go. Uh, 0 out of 1 accuracy, which I was fine mad, but obviously the crossbar doesn't count as on target. Uh, touches 64. There you go, 100% of his dribbles completed. Six passes into the final third. Uh, accurate crosses, naught out of one. Uh, not great delivering balls into the box there. Uh, we'll just quickly look at his shot map. Here we go, there's that tremendous strike from him, which he was so unlucky, uh, hit the underside of the bar and came down, of course, and so frustrating that it, it didn't hit the goalie or go in. It was an inch lower and it would have looked an absolute worldy, but it didn't. It came out. Uh, let's have a look at his passing stats from the match. So there we go. 41 out of 46 accurate passes, 89%. It didn't create any chances. Expected uh, goals, 0.04. Uh, as you can see there, expected assist, 0.03. And a 0.07 combined XG. Yeah, so defensively, we will have a look at those. Four out of five of his tackles, 180%. Uh, two interceptions in the game, eight defensive actions, and seven ball recoveries for Garner. Uh, and then if we go on to his duels, we can see here 11 duels, one, uh, two lost. And um, his ground duels, the nine out of 11 which we've already spoke about, giving him an overall 82% oh, uh, of his duels won at the weekend. So, yeah, I mean, again, for me, that just backs up what I thought at the game at the weekend. He was everywhere, put a lot of fires out, won a lot of tackles, and turned in a really good display. So, Garner was my man of the match, and hopefully he will continue to keep performing like that. Well, we haven't got, you know, the options of... Um, Tim Irabunum or James Garner either at the moment so he's comfortably still our best midfield player and at 35 showing no signs of slowing down even if he has gone a bit early with the tights uh, elsewhere on the pitch there was a couple of notable mentions that I, I feel I should do 
Uh, one of them is the much maligned Ashley Young, who I thought had another really good game. He's been in good form lately, Ashley Young. He really has, whether that be at right back or left back. And I thought he had a good, solid game again at the weekend. So let's have a look at Ashley Young's numbers from the game. Here we go, Ashley Young. 81% passing accuracy. Tackles three. So he grants heels three out of four. He won a clearances four and he had one assist. And you can see Ashley Young's heat map there. I thought, listen... Would I like a raiding right back who's up and down all day putting crosses in and getting in the box? Yes, because I feel as though that's the way football is now, the modern style. But this manager doesn't like that. We know that he likes a more defensive um, style. And, and Young's fitting that right now. Seamus Coleman's available again now, as is Nathan Patterson. But Ashley Young at the moment thoroughly deserves his place. But we'll see as we move forward. Obviously, the game's... Um, you know, will come thick and fast, certainly in December. And I'm sure the manager will have to juggle it if Ashley Young has stayed in by then. We'll see, but Seamus is edging closer to fitness every day. Uh, and the other notable mention from the day is the goal scorer, Beto. Uh, let's have a look at Beto. Listen, he wasn't on the pitch for that long, but he's got us a key goal. Let's have a look at Beto's stats from the game. Here we go. This is amazing. This is an amazing stat. Pass and accuracy, zero. Uh, he tried a couple of passes, neither of them got there. But three attempts, though, in the time he was on the pitch, which is impressive. Uh, goals won from an XG of 0.39, and he won 100% of his aerial duels. And you can see the heat map there. Listen, Beto hasn't had a lot of game time. The manager clearly prefers Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I think Dom is a better player. But Beto does create that chaos does get on the end of things and he did at the weekend you know it was a massive goal for us to just try and keep an unbeaten run going to just keep adding points on not playing very well do I think we can play much better yet I feel as though we could be more offensive at home but it is what it is at the minute but it's great to see Beto get off the bench and score a goal I think if there's anyone I don't know if I want anyone to do better than Beto if that makes sense he's the one you're always rooting for We'll see what happens with him longer term. But he come up with a key goal at the weekend and I was absolutely delighted for him. That is it. Listen, it wasn't a great game. There wasn't too much to go into. We'll be going, trying to dive deeper in the final way. So check that one out. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Who was your man of the match for Everton versus Fulham? From an Everton perspective, of course. If Fulham fans are watching it, they'll have a very different view. Uh, but let me know in the comments section below. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.